Hello everyone, in this video we're going to find the delta v value, in other words the boost in speed uh, gained by a rocket which is split into an arbitrary number of stages. So I've got a diagram here illustrating uh, the setup where we have a rocket with a body mass of capital M, body mass meaning uh, just the solid mass of the structure of the rocket itself. We've got an additional mass of lowercase m, um, which is the fuel and uh, the rocket's burning the fuel and ejecting the exhaust gases at a constant speed of W uh, relative to the rocket itself. And we've got N stages, which we are going to assume have equal masses. So each stage is gonna have a solid mass of capital M over N and a mass of fuel of small m over N. So as a simple model, you could basically imagine slicing your rocket into n equal portions as i've just illustrated down here uh, where each portion has to have its own engine um, capable of pushing the rest of the rocket up of course from an engineering perspective this is a, a, a big simplification but it makes the maths manageable and still uh, will illustrate the key features of splitting a rocket into stages so our starting point is going to be this equation which i derived in my last video which basically says that the gain in speed when the rocket burns fuel in such a way that its mass changes from mi initial mass to mf final mass is given by this expression here w is just the uh, the exhaust velocity so we're going to take this equation and apply it n times and add together all of our individual delta b's to find our uh, final speed boost so let's start with stage one of the motion in other words the part of the motion where this fuel in the very bottom segment of the rocket is burned so we're going to get some delta v value associated with that stage i'm going to call it delta v1 uh, of course this always starts the same way w natural log of well the initial mass is just the sum of the total body mass and fuel mass right this is the very beginning of our um, rocket's motion so i'm going to write that as little m plus big m the final mass is going to be little m plus big m minus however much fuel you've burnt I remember we said our n stages are assumed to have equal masses, um, both body masses and fuel masses. So we're going to just subtract off um, lowercase m uh, over n. So this is the speed boost gained by just burning that first little portion of fuel. So we'll go through a similar process, do maybe the second and third stages as well. Then we'll generalize it to find the uh, sort of stage i of the rocket. Then we'll be able to add everything together. The other important thing to note, by the way, is that after we've burnt all of the fuel of a particular stage, we're going to just discard the solid mass which is left over. In other words, after we've burnt this first little bit of fuel, you'll be left with an empty bit of rocket at the bottom. Once we're done with that, we'll just detach it. Don't give it a push into space or anything and just detach it with zero relative velocity so that it doesn't affect the momentum of the, the main body of the rocket. Um, and so uh, your rocket will be left with a little bit less solid mass for the next stage. Conceptually, that already tells you uh, why splitting a rocket into multiple stages is a good idea, because uh, you're always going to be burning the same amount of fuel as you, you would if you just had one big stage, except you're, you're discarding whatever mass you don't need as early as possible so that you put the same total amount of energy released by the fuel into uh, only the bit of the rocket that you actually care about accelerating. All right, so on to stage two. Of course, the expression is going to have a similar form, so I've already written out most of it. We've just got to figure out the initial and final mass um, before and after uh, burning the fuel associated with stage two. So our initial mass is going to start as something similar to the final mass of stage one. So we're going to start by writing down the denominator of that previous fraction. So we've got m plus big M minus little m over n. However, remember we just said that we also discard as soon as we are done with the fuel of a particular stage, we discard the associated solid mass. So we're also going to subtract big M over N, which is the solid bit of the rocket from that bottom bit um, there. Now, what's going to go on the denominator of this fraction? Well, it's going to be a pretty similar looking expression. We've still got out little m plus big M, um, but we've burnt another portion of fuel and each portion of fuel is little m divided by n because each portion is assumed to have the same amount of fuel in it, right? So we started with minus little m over n. After burning the fuel, we're just gonna have minus two little m over n. Um, but we haven't discarded the solid mass yet, right? So we're still gonna have a capital M over n there. Then of course, for the next one, we're just gonna go through a very similar procedure. We've still got our little m plus big M. Uh, we have, by the time we start stage three, we've burnt two portions of fuel. So we've now got minus two little m over n, but we've also discarded the solid mass of the first two stages as well. So now we've got minus two 
big M over N. Uh, similarly on the bottom, we've got your little m plus big M. You've burnt now an additional portion of fuel, so this 2 here becomes a 3. You get minus 3 little m over N, but again, you haven't discarded the solid portion yet, so we've still got 2 big M over N. So having gone through these three concrete examples, I think we're now in a position where we can spot the general pattern and write down an expression for delta vi, the speed boost associated with the ith stage. So of course, we're always going to start with this w natural log term. Then we're going to have a big fraction. If you look at this, the concrete examples we've got so far, we always start with little m plus big M. Um, then if you look at delta v3, you've got these two terms afterwards right? So minus 2 little m over n minus 2 big M over n. Then you have a very similar thing for delta v2, except instead of a 2 in front of each term, you've got a 1. Uh, and then you sort of have the same thing even in delta v1, except those coefficients in front of these terms have now become 0 because they're just not there. Now if you think about it, you can generalize that um, to these coefficients being i minus 1, because when it's 3, you've got 2s here. Uh, when it's 2, you've got 1s here. When it's 1, you've got zeros. So you can actually subtract uh, i minus 1, and you've always got a little m and a big M, so you may as well factorize those together um, and write it as little m plus big M, uh, and again, always divided by n. Now that we've done that, the denominator should be relatively straightforward. We just generalize the patterns in the same way, uh, except the coefficients for these two terms are now always different, right? So the little m term doesn't have a coefficient of i minus 1. It has a coefficient of just i because you've got 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, and so on. Um, so we're going to subtract off i small m over n. But again, we take away minus, uh, well, we take away i minus 1 big M um, over n. So here's our first try at generalizing the expression. I say try, I mean, it is actually correct, but there are some nice simplifications we can do. So firstly, let's get rid of the nested fractions by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by n. So we've got w natural log of, let's put our uh, dividing line there. Um, if we multiply the entire numerator by n, you're going to have n times m plus m minus i minus 1 times the same stuff, right? Because this denominator is going to, to disappear. Now, both of those terms are proportional to just m plus m. And so we can, we can factor that out. And the coefficient is going to be n minus i plus 1. All right, so let's write that all in n minus i plus 1 times m plus m. Again, this n here is coming from the fact that we multiplied this stuff by n. And this minus i plus 1 is coming from that bracket that we already had, but there is a minus sign in front of it, so everything uh, flipped its sign. Now we do a similar thing on the bottom, uh, except again your coefficients of little m and big m are going to be different. If we times everything by capital N, you're going to have an n little m there and you're going to have a minus i m there. So overall, you've got n minus i as your little m term. Um, but then the big m term will be the same as it was on the top, right? We're going to have plus n minus i plus 1 um, times big m. So at least we've got rid of the nested fractions. Still not the nicest looking expression. But when we come to sum up all of the delta vi's, we'll see that some nice simplification does happen. So let's think about that summation procedure. Our total delta V, in other words, the speed boost after you've burned all of the fuel in all of the stages, is just going to be the sum uh, of all the little delta V i's, where because you've got n stages, uh, i just runs from 1 to n. Now I'm actually going to re-index this sum uh, based on the fact that you've got this complicated combination uh, n minus i plus 1 that appears in two different places. So that suggests that we might be able to get a nice simplification by letting some new index, let's call it j, uh, be equal to that stuff, n minus i plus 1. All we've got to be careful of is that we uh, consider the limits of the sum appropriately. So the lower limit was when i is 1, but straightforwardly when i is 1, uh, you just get a minus 1 plus 1 here. And so your j is equal to capital N. Um, and when i is the upper limit of the original sum, which is big N, um, by the same logic, you get n minus n here and j is just one. So doing this change of variables actually just has the effect of flipping the order um, of the summation. Um, but we don't have to write an n on the bottom and a one on the top. We can still do the one on the bottom and the n on the top because because when you're summing, the order of the terms doesn't matter, right? We're basically just reversing the order of all the terms, but they're just added together anyway. So that doesn't make any difference. So if we substitute uh, 
for j uh, in the actual term that we're summing up, the numerator of your log is now just j times m plus m, and the denominator is just j minus 1, because it's n minus i, um, times little m plus j times big m, which already looks a lot simpler to me. And I would suggest actually reintroducing a nested fraction here, which is not always a nice thing to do, but I think we get a nice simplification by um, dividing the top and bottom by j, because then some of the terms get cleaned up, right? The, the top is just m plus m, uh, then you've got a plus capital M on the bottom, and you've got your nested fraction, which is now j minus 1 over j times little m. I think that's the, to me, that looks like the nicest form to leave this in. So to get some intuition as to the meaning of this, let's expand out the first few terms of the sum and see if we can uh, get a bit more of a concrete understanding of what's going on. So I'm going to write out delta v over w, just divide by this so that I don't have to write out w uh, a whole bunch of times. Um, your first term, well, of course, you're going to have natural log of always m plus m um, on the top. Uh, first term has j is 1. If j is 1, j minus 1 is 0. So you just have a big M on the denominator. Now, the next term, of course, it's going to be mostly the same, except this is no longer 0. Uh, that term, when j is 2, is going to be just 1 over 2, half, right? So your next term is ln of m plus m over a half little m plus big M. Uh, let's just do one more term so you can spot the pattern. We're going to have log of m plus m over this time when j is 3. The top is 2, the bottom is 3, and so you've got 2 thirds um, of little m plus big M. And I'll just put a plus dot 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 because we can have as many terms as we want. So there are a few comments I want to make about the interpretation of this. Firstly, if you look at each individual term, obviously it has the same type of form, but the difference is the fraction in front of the little m, right? Now that fraction is always going to be less than 1 because j minus 1 is always less than j. And the effect of that is that for each individual term, the numerator is always bigger than the denominator and you're always taking the natural log of something bigger than 1 and the natural log of something bigger than 1 is always positive, right? So the more terms we have in this sum, the bigger our overall value is going to get. You're just adding more and more positive stuff each time. So our conclusion is, engineering challenges aside, it's always better to split the rocket into more stages because you're just adding a little bit extra delta v each time. Another comment I want to make is that it's interesting to consider the limit of this summoned when j gets very large. If j is very big, then j minus 1 is roughly j, and therefore j minus 1 over j is roughly 1. Therefore, this entire uh, argument of the log is roughly 1 and log of 1 is just 0. So the conclusion is, when n gets very big, and therefore when we introduce large values of j, the terms at the end of the sum are going to be very, very small. They're going to be close to 0. And so that means that while it is technically always better to split the rocket into more stages, because you're always adding a bit of extra positive stuff, you get diminishing returns the more stages um, you add, because you're adding on a quantity which is getting closer and closer to zero. So anyway, our quantitative results uh, are consistent with what we were saying earlier about how it's a good idea to discard as much unnecessary mass as possible at the earliest stage possible. Uh, it's nice to see that the maths agrees with our intuition. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you soon.